Real, real quick, can you put those passages in the, in the chat? Can you, can you put the scriptures in the chat from John and Ezekiel real quick, please? Thanks. Would people be able to mute their mics and allow Matt to speak uninterrupted? Like, let him speak until he's done? You guys able to do that? Well, uh, so look, is, he, uh, is he requesting don't, to don't, speak? Don't interrupt him. Allow, allow him to speak until he's completed whatever he's got to say. You know, we we can allow them to do that. I know we don't we're not able to do that in their channels, but not Matt specifically, but just Trinitarians in general. Let's just mute up and let him finish yeah, whatever he wants he, to say. He can, he can say his piece. Go ahead. Just listening to you guys and um, taking lots of notes. You're actually helping me. You know, I could ask you guys questions. Uh, you guys ask questions. They're ill-formed questions, but I can ask you guys questions as well. Maybe you could answer them. Sure. So you don't want to. Oh, OK, so, so it's going to be open back and forth. I don't know. Generally, when people keep interrupting me, I just end up leaving. But, uh, you know, I feel well, we're, we're, we're going to interrupt you. We're, we're going to give you a, a chance to be able to say whatever you wanted to say uninterrupted. Nobody's going to interrupt you. Well, let me ask you, if, how can Jesus know all things? As Peter said in John twenty one seventeen, and yet Jesus did not correct him. So did Jesus know all things? Well, the Bible may says I answer that... him. Yeah. May I answer him on that? Yes. Go Look ahead. at that definition of no. That's not the same thing. That no means he has an understanding. It doesn't mean that he has knowledge of everything. When he says that, I yield. Well, I was going to respond really quick. The Bible tells us in the Book of John that. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things, right? So Jesus does know all things, but it's not panta. The Greek word is panta or pantas. It means to know the truth. So he knows all things that are relevant because like, and I'll finish in John 4, it tells us that that, that the Christ is going to come and he will tell us all things. But we know that Christ obviously isn't telling us everything in the universe. He's telling everything that's pertinent to the what we need to know. And that's why some translation shift between know all things and you all know the truth, right? So he's he's telling us all things that have to do with the, the relative truth and the, and the message. Right, exactly. I'm willing to talk to one person at a time, but if this is going to be a dog pile, then, I, then I'm, I'm going to bow out. Dog pile. <laughs> Not Doug Powell. Uh Okay, so you want to just talk to one person? I don't mind bowing out if you want to. If you want, you want to have a specific person talk to you, or or nobody can ask yeah. you questions. Or? How about this, Matt? With all due respect for, to everybody here, if you you can ask questions, but maybe you can uh, uh, interact with with uh, you know several people and not just make it you know, you know just uh, you and one person. If anybody else is willing to ask a question and, and respond to your question. It can be that way. No one's going to interrupt you. No one's going to dogpile. But this way, everybody can kind of be involved, uh, you know, engaging with you. Is that acceptable? No. <clears throat> if uh, we can talk to multiple people, then it becomes a brouhaha. I've done this for decades, and I just learned that, uh, you know, if I ask a question, I get dogpiled on. I just leave. Oh, I'm saying one if person. So, no, time. don't leave, Matt. Who, who do you want to talk to particularly? Would you like to talk to Eliyahu? There you go. So there I'm, you go, interrupting. No, no, I'm not interrupting. I'm, I'm saying who, who in particular would you like to talk to? I'm saying would you like to talk to Eliyahu in particular? No, I'm just saying it one person. You know, if I ask a question and one person answers, well, let me talk to the guy a little bit. Just see what's going on. That's all. If it's a dog pile, forget it. You know? Well, that's, that's all I said. I, I just said yeah, ask one person. That one person engages with you. And then 
and then you can ask another question and another person can in and you know that's all i was saying i was just just re okay. reiterating what you were saying if that's okay. all right if that's how it can be yeah i apologize i guess i misunderstood you okay um yeah so i just asked how it was possible for jesus to know all things in john 21 17 did he or did he not know all things and uh, you had you had two people answer it, so we can move on to another question, or somebody else can answer it and add on. Well, I, I'd like to know what their response would be. I could type it out. My, okay, so my response is no. He did not know all things. When we look at that word to know all things, like okay, so let me since I'm on the um, inner linear, let's go there. You said John. I'm gonna go on Bible Hub on the inner linear. And what's that verse? John what? You go to, go to Jude five also. Now I desire to remind you that you know all things once for all. You can go there and check that out. <clears throat> but I'm saying I want to deal with one verse at a time. So let's go. You said John what now? Twenty one seventeen. And the context is always important <coughs> because because Jesus somehow knew that uh, that Peter had denied him three times. How would he know that? He prophesied it, then he knew it, it was true. And then when he quizzed Simon uh, on it uh, three times, finally, you know, he said, look, you know, he says, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. So that's what he's saying there. Okay, okay so you said 2117, correct? Yeah, context is always important. I'm just taking notes, see what you guys are saying. No, no, I, 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 I hear you. I, I like to do definitions in Greek word studies. Because then we have a conflicting issue because then why did God have to give him revelation when we read Revelations 1, <clears throat> which he had to trickle down back to uh, John. I don't know if it was John, his disciple, or, you know, a lot of people argue which John it was, but Jesus had to get revelation. Uh, and this is after, this is after his uh, death, burial, and resurrection and him being exalted to the right hand of the Father. He had to be given information that he did not know. So why would he, if he knew all things, why would he have to get revelation from the Father and then pass it down to John? And it's clear, first of all, that he said he didn't know the day or the hour, only the Father knew, right? Then let's go back to where it said he had to grow in favor with God and he had to grow in with wisdom and favor with man. And then it said he had to learn obedience to God. So to me, I don't see that knowing all things, but now I'm going to check your scripture out because you said he said to him, the third time dearly you love me, he said to him, all things you know. So odious, right? So what does odious mean? <clears throat> and this is Greek 1492. It says to be aware, behold, to consider, to perceive, I know, remember, appreciate, right? It says to have physical eyes as a natural bridge to a metaphorical sense, perceiving. So this doesn't mean to have all knowledge. This just means to have some type of a perception. So I don't see that with the definition. I don't see it agreeing with what you're saying, Matt. So it... um, <clears throat> snowballing is something a lot of people will do. They won't ask a specific, answer a specific question. They go on with other things. You brought up all kinds of topics. And uh, you, you made, I think, some mistakes in them. You know, we could talk about them. I wrote them down. But then we're going to get into a longer dialogue. It becomes problematic. Uh, you have to understand that a word has a semantic range. And oida is the Greek word you're looking at. It's contrasted with gnosko. But uh, it has a, 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 it's called a semantic domain. You don't want to take the meaning of one a place where the word occurs in one place and transfer it to somebody else, someplace else. That's called illegitimate totality transfer. It's an exegetical error. What you have to do and what you should have done is gone right to the text and looked at the context to see what the context means of it. But you didn't. You know, with respect, I mean, you know, uh, you made a mistake. You just went all over the place without even looking at what was actually said. So, you know, you didn't accomplish anything. Okay. Okay. Are you, are you done, sir? Yes, I am. Thank Man. you. Okay. So... I gave several examples before I read the definition of know there, right? So I gave you several definitions of why your viewpoint is very contradicting to the Bible and not is not in harmony with the Bible. 
Because if Christ is saying that he doesn't know something, and then we have other people giving testimony that was close to him that showed that he had to learn certain things, right? And then we see at the end of the book that he had to get revelation. Why would he have to get revelation? So I was basically letting you know how your viewpoint doesn't line up with the Bible. And then I went to the exact text that you quoted. And I looked up the word. And I even gave you the Greek, uh, where you could find it in the Greek. And it, it's not lining up with what you're saying because that's not saying all knowledge. It's saying that he had a, a, a spiritual perception, basically. So... Oh, if I if you want me to, now I can go and get you the Greek word for the word that have all knowledge. Because remember, knowledge or know has several meanings in Greek. I yield. All right, since you reiterated this twice, um, uh, I'm not trying to make you look bad at all, okay? But again, you fail to go to the text, even after I told you what the text is. Well, the rules of hermeneutics is you look at what it says first. Now, I'm 66. I've been studying this stuff since 1980. So this is a long time, 43 years I've been doing this. I've studied cults for years. I'm not calling you a cultist. I'm just saying that I know what they do, and I know the mistakes they make, and you're stepping right and follow in lockstep with them. You're not looking at the original text. What you're doing is you're taking a word that appears in the text someplace else as well, you look at the text outside of the context, and then you interpret the, the rigid text with something else. And it's a mistake. It's an exegetical error. You, you did that. You went and you said Jesus didn't know all things because you didn't know the time of the day or the hour. This is You said that because you don't know the cultural context. And I, I can give the a long version, but I'll try and give the very short version. It has to do with the wedding feast. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. When a man and a woman were to be betrothed, they had a year-long betrothal. What happened was a date for the wedding had to be set so that people from far and wide could come and be there and travel. It took a long time to travel. They had to get the wine set up. They had to get the fatty calf set up. They had to get everything done. And one of the things the husband had to do, or the husband-to-be had to do, was build a room onto his father's house. And then the father was the one in the culture who had that authority to say when the son could go get the bride. And when they, he did say, go get the bride, they get the trumpeters, they would go, just like Jesus said, with the trumpet, he comes to get his bride. And all this stuff, it's all out of that. And, and inside of that, the bridegroom friends would say to the son, to the, bride, to the uh, guy, you know, the, the groom, when will the father say to go get the bride? And it was an idiomatic expression when he would say, no one knows a day nor they are but the son, but the father alone. You see, in the context of the wedding feast, they did know the day and they did know the hour. Because you had to be there from afar in order to come in. It was an idiom. It was an expression. And then they might not know the exact second, you know, the minute the father might look. Everybody's waiting. The trumpeters are waiting. Everybody's waiting. The bride know, is, is waiting, you know, a half a mile down the road or a quarter mile. When I was in Jerusalem, I saw this occur. I saw the, the wedding feast, uh, the uh, trumpeters go. It was great. It was awesome. But at any rate, so this is what's going on. It doesn't mean he didn't know. It's, you, you made a mistake there. You don't know the cultural context, all right? You said in Revelation, I'm only responding. I'm not trying to take a long time, but you said so many things. In Revelation, you had to get Revelation. It was given to him. What does it say in the text he didn't know? But you might say, well, why would it have to be given to him if he didn't know? Well, then, let's go to Revelation 19.12. Because in Revelation 19.12, you got a problem. You see, his eyes are a flame of fire, talking about Jesus. And on his head... It says our diadems, and he has a name written on him that no one knows except himself. Well, that means God the Father doesn't know. And so if you're going to say that Jesus doesn't know the time of the hour of the, of the return, which you don't understand the cultural context, the idiomatic expression, but if you want to say that, and therefore he's not God, then God the Father can't be God because only Jesus knows a name written upon himself by himself. You fail to understand that these verses that you're using have a cultural context. And I can bring up stuff to show you that your framework of logic works against you as well. He had to grow in wisdom and favor, Luke 2, 52. And the reason is because he's made for a little while over than the angels, Hebrews 2, 9, and made under the law, Galatians 4, 4. And I can go into this. I can go into the kenosis and dealing with Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Now, I can do all this stuff. And I'm not here to bore the crap out of you and throw all this stuff out at 80 miles an hour. And we can't all respond to all this. I'm just saying, what you're saying and when I say, you know, no disrespect, man, I actually mean that. I actually do. 
I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to talk down to you. And if I, if it appears that way, it's my mistake. I'm not trying to do that. But lovingly, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of things you don't know, and you've made a lot of logic errors in your assumptions here. And that's why you come to this conclusion. Okay? Again, I hope. Please tell me if I'm being rude to you. Because I really don't want to do that. And if I am, I will apologize and try and be better. So, you know. Well, I'm... Now we're just I know to, gaslighting I when I hear gaslighting. That's that's the first thing. So um, Can I, say I do say. Like go ahead. My bad. I, I guess say... I'm gonna be insulted. It was nice talking to you guys. No, I'm not not insulted. Oh man, let us, man. Respectfully, let him leave, man. I mean, nah, yeah, I, he, not about, he was, uh, ga- he we, was uh, gaslighting, man. Look, look, if the word I'm not there, about to chase after no man. Yeah, nobody's chasing after him because he know he know grown he, man want to cry. Let him leave. Man. Yeah. Nah, he knew he was. Look, well, first of all, yeah, he was I, being rude, bro. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't hear gaslighting. That was an assumption made by you guys, so you were an error by saying that. Bro, I was he was gaslighting. Like, what are you talking about? All, get, I'll shut my mouth. Let me say this. Hold on, hold on. Let me say this. Then I'll hold shut my mouth. Or shut me up by this script. Eddie, more Eddie Cobb. No, no, yeah, I tell you, I tell you. Let's be respectful. Let me say this. Yeah, hold on. You quick. man, shut me up by the scriptures, right? Then I'll shut up. Albie, be quiet. Hey, guys, come on now.